And what happened now? This meeting is being live streamed. Got it. Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to one of Collaboration Productions pre-events. And we are going to uh, talk for probably about 30 minutes about um, what is going to be coming up in December. Um, first, I want to welcome everybody. My name is Marcia and Dean Aylesworth. Hi, Dean. Hi, Marcia. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi. And Brian McKay. Hi, Brian. Hello. Hi, thanks for having me. All right. And we had Mac, but I don't know where. Mac, are you still there? Okay, well, Mac was having a little technical difficulties, but hopefully he'll come back to us. Um, so welcome again. And what we're gonna do first, um, since we have about 30 minutes, I wanna leave as much time for our guests and for you to hear as much from you guys as possible. So, you know how um, when you're at a party, when you're introducing yourself for the first time, you do kind of a little elevator speech. So I'm gonna call it the Stargate transporter ring speech. So how would you say in a minute or so, introduce yourself to somebody who didn't know who you were? So, so Brian, since you're on my screen first, how about you? Oh, wow. <laughs> the pressure. Um, <laughs> hi, everyone. I'm Brian McKaig. Uh, I've been in the industry for about 20 years now. Um, I love it. Uh, it's obviously it's changed within the last couple of years. Um, I got into the industry, honestly, because I had a major fear of public speaking and I thought I would hit it head on. And I think I booked my first three auditions and I kind of fell in love with the craft. Uh, I currently study with Linda Darlow. She's kind of been my mentor through this, this whole process. She's great, wonderful. Um, we've become dear friends and um, yeah, I've just, um, I love the craft and uh, I've met a lot of great people throughout uh, my journeys. Thank you. And Dean, how about um, you? How would I introduce myself? Um, yes. I, I, I would say, what? I have to introduce myself? <laughs> and then I'd say, as far as my, um, my association with Stargate and with television and with sci-fi, it's a uh, deep and long and um has been a great pleasure i uh i had the pleasure of uh playing uh on uh a, a, another television series uh, uh fox's Mulder's father on the x-files and then uh and then i had the pleasure and honor of uh of reprising the uh, anubis role uh in season eight of, of of stargate um and yeah i've been representative i guess in some way um holding uh, that mantle uh for for some time now that's Thank me you. Who are you? All right. <laughs> and mac what about your elevator speech you got to unmute he okay his microphone is there we go there Better. you go okay there you go. I'm telling you, when when it's your own thing, everything can typically work great. But when you're under pressure, the, the whole internet goes, yeah, no, we're going to mess with you. Uh, let's see. Boy, how would I give an elevator speech? Um, a lot of, <laughs> Who are you? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of irons in the fire. Um, actor, singer, songwriter, podcaster, uh, voice actor, uh, uh, cartoonist. Not, well, yeah, artist. I, I don't actually make my drawings move per se, so I can't really call myself a cartoonist. But um, yeah, just a lot of irons in the fire, I guess. Well, um, back to back to um, Brian. Um, we we're generally talking about Stargate, but of course you do a lot of other things also. And um, you were on Sanctuary with um, Amanda Tapping. And, and um, I remember that that was one of the first shows that used a lot of virtual kind of green screen in its technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it was one of the first ones they, they I believe they were using red cameras uh, mm -hmm. at the time. And I think they used them throughout the, the production. I don't think they, they changed over. Our sets were green. Everything was green. We had these little animals called nubbins and it, they would, 
paints just like kind of like an egg shaped soft object. And that's what you worked with was <laughs> that was the nubbin. Um, everything uh, like everything was green screen other than like practical objects for the most part, like chairs and things would be chairs. Um, if you're using a hammer, it would be a hammer. But um, for the most part, it, it was green. It was it was a wonderful experience. And um, it, you were, you know, we're kind of seeing that throughout the industry now. I've, I've been on, on multiple sets where you just walk in and it's a gigantic blue or green screen and that's what you work with. Now, I have a question. Do you find that that more difficult to do? Because, I mean, it's fun to act, I know, but to go, you have to pretend and your eyes have to lock on a particular item, you know, and mm -hmm. well, it might be like three feet higher. Do you ever have that issue? It's No, you're right. It's very technical. Um, they will have also like they'll split screen. So they'll have what is actually going to be shown and where you are and they okay. can meld it together. So then you'll have to come back to Video Village, look it over, everyone will make sure eye lines are correct and, and all that kind of technical stuff. But you're right, it is, it's a, diff it's a different, it's a different uh, beast, totally. Okay. I love to pretend too, but at the same time, you're like, look at that green wall and pretend, you know, th there's, yeah. it's one thing to act, yeah. it's another thing, really, it's all on you. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. Dean, when, when yeah. you were doing, say, like the, the X-Files, they didn't use too much of that. Whatever was there, you were actually working with. Yes, um, I did have um, an opportunity to, to use a green screen for the very first time. It was just like right after um, uh, the uh, uh, Gump, the, the Forrest Gump film. And when they had uh, they had introduced Forrest Gump to uh, JFK and Nixon and, and Elvis Presley and a few things, they had used this technology. Well, um, the the X Files was was shooting um, on thirty five millimeter, so uh, we didn't have the benefit of the uh, uh, of the five, and uh, and so we had to do it all sort of practical. And the, and and the first green screens were these ones that Forrest Gump had ever sort of done. Um, and only by that interaction of human beings on the green screen, not to say that uh, that there hadn't been other green screens before that there was, um, but mine was was on the X-Files and I haven't really done anything since like that, but oh, you know, Brian, I think that's a, that's a wonderful experience that you have uh, uh, certainly, you know, in, in, in your pocket and then and to, then to have done it with um, with with such a wonderful uh, a cast. I mean, uh, she's uh, She's quite, she's quite uh, an amazing actress, and uh, Amanda, and, uh, and 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 director, and now executive producer. Mm -hmm. And just a wonderful human. She's so kind and so giving and considerate, and she's one of the um, most wonderful actors, actresses that I've worked with. She's just so, so, so giving, and that. Uh, it eases you when you come on as a day player because the pressure's on. Everyone else kind of has their groove going and you kind of just come on as a day call. There's a lot of pressure to make sure you deliver. And she was able to definitely make me feel calm and, and part of the family, you know, within seconds. Yeah, just wonderful. I'm so glad that you said that. That's why I mentioned it because mm -hmm. she is, yeah, a wonderful mm -hmm. human being. But, you know, mm -hmm. she, she uh, doesn't suffer fools, you know, much like the rest of us, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, she's, uh, she's very kind, but uh, she, she's, she's quick. Mm -hmm. I, I found, I found the, the big thing for me was discovering her humor. Like, cause all the parts she plays, you know, you, you really go, Oh, she is acting. Cause you just kind of take for granted that everything you see is yeah, all right. You, you don't have to pretend. And then when you see her in reality, you go, she's hilarious. They should let her be funny mm -hmm. more. Crack up. Yeah. They did. She she worked on a sitcom here. Um, what was it called? Um, I can't. I'm blanking on the name. But she worked on a sitcom and she, she killed it. It was. She was so funny. As an actress yeah. or as a director? As an actress. Or... No, as an actress. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. She is. She is freaking hilarious. And on set, yeah, stitches all the time. Yeah. Uh, well, mm -hmm. and Peter De Louise as well. You know, it was really. And well, I mean, Rick. Uh, RDA was always, you know, cutting up as well. A bunch of funny people. <laughs> yeah, I, I love to hear the stories from behind the scenes where they weren't expecting one of them in particular, Rick, to do something zany. And then they all have to cut. They're still filming, so you can't yell cut. 
and they all kind of have to adjust. Michael Shanks told me there are many times when they just turn and look at him for a second. That's them taking their moment to like not lose it. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, um, when we, um, one of the things we'd like to talk about is collaboration. And, and basically, almost everything we do in life is a collaboration, but specifically thinking about um, collaborating with. Um, with other actors to create new projects or have you ever on a um, on a project found someone that you would like to work with away from your current project and then created something new are you speaking to me Dean <laughs> sure no, I I did yes yes um, and, and I've done it with uh, with some of the groups from from Stargate specifically, um, and Anna is is helping me uh, by by co-producing a, a couple projects that uh, that we're about as well, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it, the collaboration is is the is the the thing. It's the ensemble, of course, but to collaborate and bring your creative juices, the thing that you're excellent at, and to have someone else bring their excellence to it is really enlightening and, and just um, inspiring to me every time that I listen and learn and pay attention to their nuance. Uh, uh, it, it, hopefully we come up with wonderful stories and, and, and I don't know, it's certainly an amazing experience for me. I enjoy it. I know Mac, um, with your music and, and um, have you You've come in contact with a lot of um, people from the shows, and, and have have you ever de have you developed some collaborations with? A little bit, but I, yeah, I, and honest to goodness, I it would just what Dean was saying. Uh, it really for me is the most inspiring thing, and it doesn't have to be somebody that you know is world renowned. If you are in a room with someone who you click with, who the ego isn't there, and that's a hard one. If someone's willing to look at the project over, you know, me, 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 that's when you go, I want this person. This person gets it. And like, uh, for example, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I ever told the story, but hanging out with Jason Momoa uh, at a con, he had remembered me performing at uh, somewhere a couple years before. So when he saw me, he goes, oh, hey. I really like your music. And I said, yeah, you were learning guitar. You said we jam sometime. Well, a little while later, I hear boom, 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 down the hall. And I look, and he's looking for me, and he has a, the slide, the metal slide, because he's learning the blues. I'm like, dude, go get your guitar. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. And we spent like four hours hanging out, trading my, it was two hours trading my guitar back and forth. And he goes, you know what? Let's go buy a guitar. I need a guitar. So he goes and gets an, a brand new guitar so we could sit there across from each other. He's teaching me how to use a slide. I'm teaching him how to do like bar chords, and, you know, and it's one of those where you very quickly forget, oh, this is the guy that I just watched on the show that, you know, because now we're music buddies. Now it's, it's beyond, you know, ego or fame or whatever. It's he sees a musician. I see a musician. Let's go. I love that. I like I said, that's that's you know, that's Jason Momo. Everybody right now, oh Aquaman. But it could be the guy down the block. You get a good hearted giving soul who has some monicum of talent. I latch on to those people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So um Brian, with your um interactions with, with fans, have you ever uh had an interaction that maybe led to another friendship or just recently yeah mm -hmm. just recently i've um i had uh a couple recognize me from supernatural it's their favorite show and i have a, a scene which the death scene is one of the top death scenes on the show i, I die in an elevator i get sliced in half so people have had fierce awesome. elevators since watching that scene it's more about the elevator and less about me um but they well, remember me about the death scene on supernatural though too man yeah I yeah got there too. yeah <laughs> yeah and they remember they remembered it and they were like probably not and i'm like uh they said hey we're really we're big supernatural fans you kind of look like the the guard from the elevator scene and i said yeah that's me 
Um, and we've become friends. Yeah, we text back and forth and they're a great couple and they're huge sci-fi fans. They're sci-fi fans are the most loyal fans as we all know. Um, and uh, yeah, it's kind of neat to build a friendship with them. I want to ask, how prepared were you for, you know, science, as you said, science fiction fans are some of the most enthusiastic, ardent and loyal. Before you started, did somebody warn you or give you some clues about what it was going to be like to join this world of fandom as, a, as uh, an actor? Uh, I have a fellow uh, actor. We, we've lost touch uh, just recently in COVID and everything. But um, Chuck, he was the um, he was on Stargate uh, Atlantis. He was the technician, Chuck, the technician. And he told me he used to do these conventions and he says it's like a massive party. It's wild. It's crazy. It's a good time. I haven't, uh, I haven't done any conventions. Um, so I haven't really been able to experience it. Um, but I would hope one day to do them. I hear they're a blast. They, they are. Have I've you done any you. Dean and Mac? Have you done any? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. As a matter yeah. of fact, that's where, um, uh, Jason and I were hanging out in the lobby for four hours, you know, creating songs. But I met Chuck, too. And, and it's amazing. You're right. If, if you get and I could say this at least about Stargate fans. I don't remember having an incident where you went, oh, boy, this guy. Oh, boy, this is going to be uncomfortable. Everybody's kind. Everybody's giving. Everybody's nice. You know, actors, writers, producers. And I think, Dean, we've talked about this. Uh Everybody that is from that show in one way or another, I don't know if it's a miracle or if they just really went through the filtering system. Everybody's great. You, I think they, they did go through a filtering system. They must have. <laughs> right? Because I know, I know one of the rules was if you're not a decent person or you're a pain to work with, you don't come back. They write you mm -hmm. out. You know, where if they do like you, they try and find a way to bring you back. You know, so even that, that trickles down to the fans of these conventions where my first convention was a Stargate convention and you don't know what to expect because you see, you know, there's the cliche of you're going to get the over the pushy people or the obnoxious people. But honest to God, I've been to other conventions where that has happened, but nothing related to Stargate. Everybody has been very giving and no pushing or shoving. Yeah, no pushing, no fighting. No, yeah. Everyone's single file. They all wait in line, you know, quite well. Yeah, Every, everyone's <laughs> fine. You know, the truth is, is that it's not just a fandom. It's a friendship, you know. Uh, it's a bond mm -hmm. to, to a show, to an experience. Each one of us has a specific and individual experience with this show. Now, whether it's a, as, as an audience member who watches it and, and, and that you're going through something in your life and this thing helped, it helped you crack a smile at the end of the day. Uh, you know, it, it, it joined you in dinner when no one else was there. There, you know, I mean, there's so much in common that we have and which is which is the wonderful thing about these conventions is that we we, we bring together this common feeling and this 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 inspiration and the, and this this experience that is individual but common mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. dean do you remember your first your first convention do you remember that experience where was it i was too drunk yeah no i have <laughs> no, I, of course i remember my first one. well then we um, really want to hear all about this one <laughs> yeah um my very first convention was um uh, uh, was organized by my uh, my publicist at the time. His his name um, Bill Wanstrom and uh, and Andrew Jackson, um, uh, another uh, Stargate alumni, um, was uh, was working with Bill as well. And uh, we had I had I hadn't even been on the show yet, and it was in two thousand and five. Um, and but I had done the X Files. Uh, previous to, to that. And so uh, I, I, Bill put together this, everybody, he basically brought everybody here in Vancouver, all of the locals who had done anything of significance in any of the shows, these wonderful, wonderful shows. I, we had, we had Nick Lee, we had, oh, there was everybody, everybody was there really, truly. And, and, and I was humbled by the experience. It's the first thing. It was like, 
people wanted to 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 know what you were drinking they wanted to know you know you know, you know what what was in your coffee they you know and, and then just and then to sit up on a panel and to and to have inquiry about your real feelings about really you know how is things have gone on without diminishing finishing you, making you smaller and saying, oh, well, you're only uh, like Brian, it's a day player or, you know what I mean? Those, those, those things are, are, of course, there, but not in any way uh, diminishing or, 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 or you know, le leaning or lent to any, any negative energy. It was just really about giving and, and coming together and, and, yeah, and having a little drink. <laughs> I definitely had a drink, I think. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> Well, Brian, see what you get to look forward to. <laughs> I, I, it's on my vision board is to to be in the flesh at a at a Stargate convention. That would be even as a fan. I would go as a fan. Um, so have you ever be have you been to a convention as a fan? Not yet, either. I haven't. I haven't done that either. No. Ah, so what are you a fan of? Um, I like sci-fi. Like I do like sci-fi. Um. Yeah, I like, and I like stories and I like having an experience like what Dean said, if I have, it can be, it doesn't matter what it is, if, if it, if I have an experience while watching a show, that's what I take with me. It, it's about the, ex having an experience. And I, I think Dean really nails it when, when he says to, to have the experience, like what's in your coffee, what's, you know, just connecting to like, and especially post COVID, that's what, really what we need is just to reconnect. I don't know about you guys, but it's just starting to open up here in Vancouver, and I'm finally reconnecting with other human beings. I was supposed, and, to, um, I was supposed to go to one at the end of October, and because it's yeah. you know, wave two or whatever they're calling this new one, uh, we had to cancel to go to the, you know, to be part of the, the convention, but you're right. It's something to look mm. forward to, and the thing about going to that you'll find is if it's a weekend thing, like you're there for two, three days, great, you get to relax. By the time it's over, you know a lot of people as yeah. much as you want to because you're not mm -hmm. rushed. Nobody likes standing over you going, get the signature and move on. No, mm -hmm. you're hanging out. There's the panel, there's the Dean can attest to this. There's the panel where you stand in front of everybody, but then there's the after, you know, the after hours where you're just hanging out in the yeah. lobby, bar, restaurant, whatever, and you get to just calm down there's no agenda and mm -hmm. it's everything that you want because you're right you do get the friendships and the one-on-ones and the you know mm -hmm. of information. I, i'm sure i would have more questions for the fans than they would have for me to be Yay! honest I, what's going on with you you know i want to know about you yeah man yeah it's true you've already seen you've already seen me <laughs> i don't know you i want to know you so that's what i think if i went to a convention that would be the best part of it and you would be welcomed with open arms because of that exact attitude, Brian. It's it's it is about them. We're 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 in their living room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've been through, I've done some backstage um, meet and greets, and I've been part of it. I've been uh, gone to others, and it's the same type of thing. If if you're given the amount of time to actually give me five minutes with somebody, that's all I ask. If somebody's coming through, give me five minutes before they're moved along. Great. That because that's really all you, you, you at least very much need. It's other than the hi, how are you? Here's a signature. Let's have a real conversation, you know? And the and I, I got that from the actors and the musicians that I adore, who many of them wouldn't do a convention unless that was part of the contract, was you have to allow me at least five minutes per person. Mm -hmm. yeah don't push them along don't don't charge them for every single action like you know every single selfie or everything you know what i mean it's just like when because that experience with me and and and, and is mine as well as theirs mm -hmm. I, I mean i don't mean to be selfish but it's true you know it's like like i remember my very first uh, autograph and how it made me feel and how humbled i was that someone showed that much attention to me to stand there and wait with a pen in hand ready. Oh, who okay. Was, <laughs> who, who was your first oh. autograph? Mm -hmm. I was on a, on, on a television set um, just coming out of the, the Star trailer. Um, 
and and a young man that you might all know, um, Peter Williams, was uh, was playing a character named Pin on a television series called Neon Rider, and I was stepping out with uh, hair much like I have now, um, <laughs> which is great, by the way. I love oh, it. I'm growing it. Yeah, it's a like great. I love it. Oh, thanks, I, I bud. love it. Oh, thanks. <clears throat> and, um, I'm stepping out of this trailer and and uh, and Peter's walking because like basically there's all these trailers on this sidewalk and there's this this young man uh, maybe 12 years old with a with a, with a pad and, and and white paper and a pen in his hand and I can see him there and it's uh, it's it's quite fall it's it's probably October November and here it's it's not significantly cold but cold enough to you know to have to wear a winterish jacket and and so he's waiting there in the cold and and Peter's walking and I'm coming out down this the little, little stairs of this thing and he asks me and he looks at me, up at me as I'm walking and I look down at this young man and he asks me for an autograph and I I I I was kind of dumbfounded. I was like, I didn't really know. And there was really an audible pause. <laughs> and as Peter was walking by, he goes, give the kid an autograph, make his day. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? Like uh, it was, and then of course I talked to Peter about it afterwards, but I went, okay. And I, you know, I said, well, what, I, this is, new to me what would you like me to say he said just sign your name and and uh, and and you know maybe you know something and i said okay so i said best wishes dean aylesworth and and i gave it to him and, and i thanked him and uh, that you know uh, yeah he just he went on his way and i was once again like i said so humbled by that experience you know uh, the next one was very humbling because I was on uh, I was working as a as a waiter uh, and uh, and 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 serving <laughs> the family while they asked me for an autograph. And I was like, okay, here, here's your autograph. Would you like fries with that? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Been yeah. there. <laughs> so who who has practiced who practiced their autograph before they started giving them? Did you start practicing how you wanted your signature to look? No. Come on, Brian, you must have. No, 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 no. I, I'm much like Dean. I didn't know what to do. I didn't, I didn't know. Even if I, I just use the signature that I write my checks out for. It wasn't. <laughs> That's good to I know. I wasn't prepared for it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they have my, it. My aunt, <clears throat> when I was just a kid, my aunt would say, listen, with your art, you have to sign it. You always have to put a little something in the corner. So she would stand over me and go, try, uh, no, try that again. Even if you just do initials, go ahead. You know, like she was, she was more into it than I was. I'm like, I'm six. I don't, nobody's going to care. Mm -hmm. I, I actually, I did practice, but I practiced really, really early. Like at, 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 you know, six and eight and 12, do you know what I mean? I have, I have Oscar, um, um, uh, um, you know, responses, you know, to having won an Oscar. I, you know, I have speeches for that I, all, all ready now. <laughs> I'm quite proud of my signature. My signature is, does, does a really quite beautiful D and then, and then an A that crosses out and it looks like the Star Trek A. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, I've got, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, I think you're, you're kind of looking for a guest role and maybe a Star yeah. Trek show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the next one, right? It's Star Trek yeah. and then Star Wars. Yeah, yep. so we've completed all of the sci-fi realms. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, getting back to like being at conventions, we're all excited to be back, uh, hopefully soon in person. And there are cosplay is something that has just burst out everywhere. Everybody wants to, you know, dress as something or someone or um, have you ever costumed at, um, well, Brian, you haven't been to a convention yet, but maybe Halloween or do, do what do you dress as when you want to not be yourself? <laughs> well, I know for me, comfort's a big thing. Uh, mm -hmm. when, when I go to a Stargate convention, well, Jack O'Neill, 
I'll go Jack O'Neill. And I'll either wear the full off-world gear, which gets warm inside a convention hall, uh, or if I want to go a little more relaxing, I wear the BDUs, which is, you know, black t-shirt, green top, green pants, military boots. Good enough. Mm-hmm. But like mm-hmm. for other things, you know, you go with what's easy, what I'm not going to spend a fortune on stuff. I have a fedora so I could do Indiana Jones, you know, like what, what's the, I, I was daredevil, uh, with the black bandana that you could see through, but then that's just a black top and black cargo pants. Easy is the way to go, I think, especially if you're going to be doing something all day. Oh. Okay, now if you haven't, what might you consider as a costume? If you could dress and I well, can. I have. I have. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And what I what I preferred at the time was someone else dressing me, making a suggestion. Do you know what I mean? Because because the the the. Subjective is really quite difficult to, to kind of go, well, well, how does everybody observe me? Do you know what I mean? How do they, you know, and, and so it, it's easy when someone says, hey, I see you like this. And then you go, oh, okay, good. And, and I had the, the pleasure of wearing a, a sort of an off world, you know, superhuman. It looked like a Buck Rogers outfit. It was, yeah, I've got a photograph of it and everything. I even did wear the Jack O'Neill jumper too, but we had, uh, we were selling it at, the, at an auction. Uh, uh, yeah. So yeah, I've cosplayed a, a bit, a little bit. Sure. <laughs> Whatever he Well, let's, you know? let's all look at Brian and figure out what he should dress as. Let's see. Mm. You know, I probably shouldn't say this and I could get in trouble, but I still have my O'Donnell jacket from Stardate in a box Ooh. with what? clothes. Oh, I'm going to get that wardrobe lady in trouble, but I have it. And I, wow. I have it. Do you know yeah. if you show up at Con wearing that, people will lose their mind. So oh, I think I think I would, I think I would wear that for the first one. And then maybe I'd go a little bit more crazy for the second one. Sure. Or it's, it's usually multiple days, isn't it? So you could wear a costume for the first day and wear something more extravagant for the second. Usually it's a costume gala, right? Like a party. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of these um, uh, cosplayers will have amazing, amazing, um, intricate that they make with plastic and that they mold themselves and that they build costumes that are just amazing so uh, you know they, they and they all get ready and some of them are like just you know they're they're like oh they're in such a rush to try and get it all because i, I don't know what they win i don't think it's really anything it might be mm. you know i don't have a coffee with with us brian or something right but it's uh <laughs> It, it, they they take such delight in it and 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 care and attention you know so uh just that one night but a lot of you know everybody through the whole time you know oh, you show up you're going to go to visit the 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 comic con you i would get dressed up for sure you know yeah yeah well, I don't know you guys but do you are you are you like me and are you obsessed with if you wear a t-shirt right it's got to, you're, you're basically a billboard for what you love, whether it be a musical band or a superhero or whatever. I kind of look at wearing t-shirts or jackets or whatever the same way where I am representing this, mm-hmm. you know, what I mean? like, oh, I love this musician. So now you're going to ask me about it, please. You know, <laughs> so even yeah. if you show up at a, at a con or something, which I've done, I'll wear one of my favorite t-shirts and you'll have people come up to you go, hey like your shirt oh dude you gotta, you gotta merch that right yeah 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 you gotta merch <laughs> yeah. that right yeah yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. Sure. I I knew with t-shirts yeah yeah no, no. i actually i think you know what dean i think there is an anubis uh t-shirt somewhere there's gotta there's, be there is there's gotta be definite in, insignia and and i've seen that and um i've yeah I, I i admire it yeah yeah anyone who wants to send me an anubis t-shirt i i'm happily yeah from oh, small God. to large I, I i can wear them all they stretch yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> well um uh anna our uh, leader had wanted me to remind everybody we actually were going to do a supernatural pre-event chat on october 30th for halloween so Woo! um That'll be something fun to do. And we can talk some more about costuming and things like that. Um, to uh, also, when we're talking about projects 
getting restarted and, and what are some of the things that you're looking forward to as far as projects, work coming up in the next couple of months maybe? Do you have anything? <clears throat> I think, Brian, do, do, I, do, do you, yeah, do you have a- it's, it's, it's been quite busy for me. Um, mm-hmm. the, the new the new platform of self tapes, um, as frustrating as some of my peers are with them, um, it's been an opportunity for me in a way that I probably wouldn't have been brought into the room for the initial audition, but because they can see multiple tapes, they're seeing me and um, I'm taking advantage of that. And um, so I worked on Debris, which was on NBC. Um, I think it was the last episode, I believe it got canceled. Um, I worked on a Hallmark movie, Crossword Mysteries. Um, I just filmed, I think it was two weeks ago, I I worked on Legends of Tomorrow, which is CW. And then uh, my pride and joy though, but it hasn't aired yet, uh, can kind of talk about it, but not too much, is um, a pilot called National Parks. And it was written and produced by Kevin Costner. And uh, I can't say what I played on it. Um, it was for ABC. I believe they passed, but I do believe they're shopping it to Netflix or a streaming service, Amazon. He has Yellowstone, as we all know, on that as well. And that was um, that experience was by far the greatest experience I've had so far. Yay! Congratulations, yeah. bud! Yay! Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that is Thank you. awesome. Yeah. Kevin Costner is one of those um, people who seems to put his heart and soul into whatever projects that he works on. It, this, this script is one, one of the best scripts I've read. Mm-hmm. And it, uh, it was filled with a great cast. Some of it you'll find on IMDb and there's still some cast members that aren't on there for reasons. Um, but uh, it, it, yeah, it had to be very hush hush um but it was uh it was a blast and i i hope it gets picked up so people can see it wow there's so many streaming services now it seems that everybody's hungry for things so mm-hmm. i'm i'm looking forward to i'm i have that on my list now so <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm looking forward yeah. to that and as far mm-hmm. as the legends of tomorrow that's completed correct this completed mm-hmm. that airs uh, November 10th, I believe that episode. Mm-hmm. And that's a fun show too. That doesn't take itself at all seriously. It was, they were, again, no, it, it, again, it was a wonderful um, set to step on. It was very warm and welcoming. And there was some crew members and cast that I have already worked with. And that's always, mm-hmm. you know, that's always a nice thing to walk on the set and feel comfortable. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it was a blast. Mm-hmm. Wonderful, wonderful cast, wonderful crew, wonderful show. Yeah. One of the and, most and, things that and I Dean, Dean, Dean you, you, I know you've, you've had some projects coming up and, and your forefathers, has that aired yet? It hasn't really. Um, no, it hasn't aired yet. We filmed it um, yeah. just, just this last summer. Um, and yeah, I enjoyed mm-hmm. the hell of it. Um, well, actually it was summer before. Yeah. And, and I had this, this huge gigantic beard and, uh, and, and I was letting my hair grow out, but I did, it wasn't really, it was still quite short, um, but I could sort of tie it back a little bit. And I, I looked like Lebowski for sure. I actually showed up on, <laughs> on set with a, with my bathrobe and, uh, and this t-shirt, the t-shirt, it, it said good times. Uh, it was like, so <laughs> it was so Lebowski. Um, yeah, yeah, and I loved it. I, I have, uh, I have. Let's see, one, two, three, four projects that are projects, straight up uh, in development projects. Um, I have um, um, uh, a. Uh, uh, it's been announced, so I guess I can say something. It's always scary, isn't it, Brian? You can't yeah. really say anything. It's like no, um, it's, we we it's sign. Called- yeah, your NDA, the right? NDAs. So, um, but this one is 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 called um, Transcendent Realms. Mm. It's uh, it's being shot in Europe, um, and and I've been postponed uh, three times now because of mm. COVID, and, uh, and we're starting up again in uh, in the new year in March, and uh, and happily, uh, COVID and all of its restraints and everything are are 
everyone has been you know compliant in 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 what's necessary to move forward uh as well as uh you know we we've, we've made a commitment just like it you know brian and everyone else is doing we're we're making commitments to uh, you know to it, it's not a sacrifice it's it's an absolute pleasure to 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 become a a collaborative piece uh, in, in 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 a in a wheel, you know what I mean? A cog, if you will, that will 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 do as asked. Maybe a little squeaky, but will still do as asked, and 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 uh, hopefully shine. I mean, it's always about the project, right? And so I'm really happy that that's going on. But uh, these these ones that I'm in development, I'm really uh, excruciatingly proud of. Um, you know, sort of a a, a Rachel Gould. Um, film endeavor maybe mini series kind of because of the streaming services there's interest in those um those aspects of it uh i've, I've uh, collaborating with a dear friend of mine nathaniel arcan um uh you know on two different projects uh, one a uh, a buddy cop thing uh really really good um and then uh another one that's uh that's dear to my heart uh, louis real it's the life of the, and times of louis real um, because I'm, I'm his, uh, I, I'm, we're first cousins, three generations removed. I don't know how, you know, you kind of put oh, that wow. into, into your brain. Um, but, uh, you know, having that honor, I, I, you know, I, I felt, uh, an obligation, uh, uh, to, to tell, because I mean, Louis Riel said at one point in time, 150 years from now, our stories will come back to life and it will be the artist's who say them, who, who, who speak them, who share them. And, uh, and, and that's, you know, something I'm willing to, to actually stand up to and, and, and do. And, and, and I'm creating it and executive producing and starring in it. And, uh, but it's all BS until it's, you know, it's been done, you know? So I'm just, I'm working very diligently at doing it, but I, I have such Oh, such great and wonderful collaborators, you know, some people that are, that have, uh, have made some commitments to this thing that I'm, I'm just touched and, and just so, because it's, you know, it's a work of, of, of a lifetime. And, you know, it's, it's we're looking at a mini series, six episodes and yeah. And then from there, uh, once again, all of it's uh, speculation dealing with COVID dealing with whatever I've, I've had a few uh, conventions having been canceled for for COVID, and supposedly going to uh, to England over the pond next year for uh, for a convention, which I'm really looking forward to. And and as I said, hopefully I'll I will already be there um, because of uh, transcendent realms. Uh, I, I yeah, I, I'm I'm dying for the future, but um uh, in the mm -hmm. meantime, I'm really preparing for it. You know, uh, by being uh, a good listener and paying attention to 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 my cohorts to my friends and family and uh and doing some push-ups and mac uh, your music your podcast your yeah well yeah uh, talking about what's coming up uh the latest thing besides writing music uh i have, to, I have enough songs for an album i just the the device i have isn't working for the computer that i have for some reason the static but uh, yeah, I continue, as Dean can attest, having great guests on uh, the podcast. And for the uh, MacGyver SG-1 audio series, I've started a new thing, which is um, all fellow artists out there. What I've started to do is do submissions for MacGyver, Jack O'Neill, SG-1 together, a la the audio series. And I'm doing them myself to kind of give like, okay, you guys know the scene that I, that we've recorded from episode, whatever. Well, here I drew what I figure it would look like. And I've opened it up to other artists uh, on the interwebs to submit their take on either. It can either be from uh, episodes that have already happened in the audio series, or maybe what you see coming up what, what would you like to see what would you how would you like to see macgyver and jack o'neill interact and so you know everybody gets to take part in this and i repost it and i'm proud of the the great uh submissions that we've got so far but i figure that that's a good thing to keep going you know oh encouraging imagination you rock 
Thank you. Well, <laughs> it also will take some of the weight off me. You know, Here, here's my stuff. Here's my stuff. It's a polish. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's great, there's great artists out there. There's great artists. If you look on Twitter, I'm addicted when I see some of the, the things that people come up with for, you know, the, Stargate, for example. Okay, you you see this scene? Well, let's see more. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme, gimme. And and talking about collaboration, it's inspiring when you see people feed off each other. And that's what our whole event is about, the collaboration creative convention that's happening in December. It's going to be two weekends, December 10th through the 12th, and then December 17th through the 19th. And I just want to remind everybody that they can go to Eventbrite right now and sign up. There are a couple of levels. One is free. And you can also donate. We, we are a nonprofit organization. And, um, and so our goal is to support all kinds of collaborations between um, actors, creators, fans. And we look forward to a lot of interactive and um, kinds of events that will feature actors together with fans and coming up with new ways to create things. And um, so we hope, we know we'll have you back in December and we hope to have a lot more fans as well. And, um, and we really appreciate hearing uh, what you're up to and look forward to uh, your upcoming events. And um, so as, as we close here, I don't want to spend too much time with you. I know you, you guys are really busy and, and whatnot, but um, I do want to give you a chance to kind of wind up your feelings about working with, with fans and maybe what you hope might come out of a collaboration type event. Who should go first? Ooh. <laughs> you go first. Go ahead, Mac. I'm interested to hear what you have to say. <laughs> well, you kind of already, you kind of talked about a lot of the things that, that you've already been interacting with fans about. And, um, and as, as I'm, I might bring in a little, a little friend with me because even though it's not Stargate, we've been talking about a lot of Stargate here, there are um, other tracks that we're going to be talking about at uh, Collaboration. So I wanted to bring with you one thing is, let me see if you can see her. This is a mermaid and we are going to be having some mermaid events. So um, there is a, a lot of interest in that kind of fantastical aquatic figures. So if that's something that you're interested in, you can jump right in and dive along with us um, when we talk about things like Legends of the Blue Sea and, and, um, and all kinds of things, uh, fantastical and, and sea creatures. Might any of you be interested in, in that type of um, discussion, maybe? I am not knowledgeable in such things. So I would be oh, in the <laughs> Very good. <laughs> and you I never know what you, what you might've worked on in the past. Have you ever um, you know, worked on something, on a project that had mermaids or fantastical sea creatures in it? Siren. Siren? Siren. That TV show? Sirens? Yeah. You you worked on Siren? No. Oh no, I, but but I tried to. Yeah. You did? <laughs> That's actually one of the shows we're gonna be covering. So um so what what happened with that? Was it Obviously, were you going for a specific yeah. character? I, I, I was too tall. Yeah. I don't know. I don't I, yeah, they just didn't call they didn't call me. Yeah. Maybe mm -hmm. maybe my hair was too long or something. Yeah. But mm -hmm. uh they, I have a really interesting, um, you know, story about collaborating with fans. With uh, I was having, as I said, mentioned that I was going over to England to uh, to to another convention there. Um, it was it was supposed to have happened in September of from I, I think it was the tenth through to the twelfth. And uh, when I was there, I was going to uh, to go a, a day early and film some scenes with uh, with a gentleman who was shooting some some stuff for a, a Stargate kind of uh, um, homage is the best way that I can put it without, you know, without you know, giving anything away. 
Uh, not a recreation, not a, you know, but an homage in a way, you know, maybe a, a storyline that in the multiverse, something else may have happened. So it was super, super cool that the, uh, the, the, the ideas, the initiative and the, uh, and, and the confidence to, 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 to not only approach myself, but other actors who were coming and, uh, and, and, and share their story, their idea that they wanted to present and, and, uh, you know, it's scary. It's scary for everyone to, because to, you put your art out there, it's something that you've got your heart in and uh, and the possibility of it being rejected, like me not getting cast in Sirens, is, uh, you know, much like that. Not that you're bitter or anything. No! <laughs> no! No! <laughs> uh, uh, you well, you Dean, I have to say- rejection. <laughs> um, Brian, did you want to say something? I, no, I just wanted to touch on um, the, the Louis Riel project uh, that you spoke of. I really hope that that uh, takes off. I'm originally from Manitoba myself. I was born in Flin Flon. Um, I grew up outside of Winnipeg myself. Uh, also, my son is Métis. So that project oh. would be dear to my heart and it's going to get made. Miss Quick, it's going it, to get absolutely made. it will, it will, it will. Yeah. I have no, no real, you know, and, and if I don't play it, I don't care. You know what I mean? Like if, yeah. if, if, it's, if it's a matter of it not getting made, I won't play it, you know, but I'm, I'm going to play, you know, I'm going to, yeah. I'm so yep. thank you for that. That's a really nice mm -hmm. thing that you just mm -hmm. said. I really appreciate that. Well, I want to thank you all for coming and chatting with us today. We spent, we actually went over a little bit where you were so interesting and engaging and we look forward to seeing you soon again and um, have a super rest of the day. What time is it where you are, by the way? Coffee time. Coffee yeah, it's, time. it's a, almost two o'clock. It's eight two to two. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ten, 10 to five okay. for me. Okay, I'm on Eastern time, so, so it's about five o'clock. So, okay, well, thank you once again. And oh. we have had a grand time and we appreciate it so much. Thank, thank you, you for watching. Thank you for having yeah. us. Yes. Thank you. And it was nice reconnecting with everyone. Definitely. See everyone, everyone. soon. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>